we like to take some time and thank all of you because you're awesome and for some reason you think that we're just on that side of awesome enough that you decide that we're worth your no, money. No, that's no, a strong no, 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 word, Pedro. Man. What do you mean? You're trying to embarrass us. Awesome? <laughs> like, we, we get participation. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux GameCast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Uh, do you remember SteamOS? It was a thing, man. Well, Steam's kind of forgotten about it, but somebody wants to keep that memory alive, and a special unicorn has arrived on Linux in the form of a brand new fighting game. Very excited about that. I'm going to give you a hat in exchange for $100. Uh, make that $4. Zomgo Red Hat doesn't support gaming under Linux because why do companies spend millions of dollars on computers and software if not to run Doom? Risk System has some new free DLC. And the devs have also decided to throw some keys into the chair QA position ring. And the uh, fine folks from down under have shut down. Defiant Development moves on from the Vidja games. Oh man, I feel the chunder. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel <laughs> it as well. Welcome back. It is another beautiful, beautiful day for Linux gaming and Linux in general. I'm Old Man Vin. That is our tame Canadian podcaster. Uh, the man, the legend, the guy who needs to buy a damn level. That's one Jordan Swing. And staying up late past his bedtime, Pedro Mateus in Cambridge, the Isle of Britannia. Hello. Cool as a cucumber. I'm, I'm sure it's it is much better today. Yes. <laughs> and you beautiful people at home joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Don't ask a long story. Anyway, before we get going, uh, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Who wrote? Oh, everybody wrote stuff except for me. Jay, baby, what's what's up? Yeah, well, uh, apparently, apparently, I can do pull ups now. That that's the thing I discovered. I have the ability to do. My, uh, a friend of mine bought me like a pull up bar, one of the ones you hang under the door. Uh, for my birthday last year, and I had it set up. I set it up as an anchor to do some like face pulls with the resistance band. And then while it's hanging there, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try to do a pull up. And I was watching some videos on pull up progression. I've been like doing negatives at the gym and stuff like that. So I I, I did a pull up, and I'm like, oh shit! Apparently, I can do this now. Can I do another one? Yeah. All right. Can I do another one? Yeah. Can I do another one? No. All right. But going going from zero to three is pretty nice. Um. I'm I'm pretty excited. It's been a goal for a long time, and now I can do it. Proud. Proud's the only word I can. Uh, yeah, just proud. Uh, Pedro, what's up, man? Well, uh, well, I'm gonna hijack this a little bit to thank uh, Katana Steel and Artherin, uh, respectively, for the IT87 kernel module heads up. Thank you very much for that, Katana. And uh, Artherin decided, you know what? There's a game with your name on it, so here you go. My friend Pedro is uh, now sitting in my Steam library. I still haven't played it, but uh, I will tomorrow. Uh, and if uh, everything goes to plan, that'll be the game on Tuesday. Who knows? <laughs> oh, man. Right on, right on. Uh, you're just going to have to deal with me this evening. I'm juggling a lot of... Uh, not horse YouTube. parts? Yes, Jordan. <laughs> fucking horse parts. Uh, new pieces, <laughs> bits and bobs. Because we're sending video over... Ether doodles along with audio, and I'm trying to make it do a thing to resolve some of these sync issues we have with having that separated with HDMI encoders, which we're not using for this is going over the network through a router that is genuinely telling me to kill it right now. And it's like, I am not built for this, but hey, let's test in production. But then that, that, that's pretty much my adventure. I've been having a fun time with this NDI, OBS NDI. Look that up if you've been looking for like, hey, man, I want to do like a streaming PC or something like that, but you don't want to get the HD mind coders and stuff. This is doable, but I think I'm going to need just a little more horsepower than uh, what our Hoptiplexes are capable of. Either that or they can catch on fire. But either way, it'll be entertaining. Not as entertaining as a horse. Yeah, speaking of flaming horses, uh, it is straight up on fire. I don't know who lit it on fire. I told you before, if you're going to leave the, if you're going to light the horse on fire, put it out afterwards. I'm not made of gasoline. It's the steam. Linux. The updates. Of of the week. Week. All right. <laughs> so, latest bit of news comes from uh, Extreme Tech. So, if you've been following us, we've been talking for a very, very long time about why the Steam Hardware Survey. Is actually just a bunch of made up booga booga numbers. And uh, apparently, there's a reason why AMD reflects very poorly in the 
um, Steam survey uh, for their market share. And apparently that's because of uh, internet cafes. Uh, the way the way Steam tracks... Um, Dude, is there anything an internet cafe just can't cock up? <laughs> you know, you know, I pro- I'd come up with something, but then they'd find a way to fuck it up, right? Like, you, tr- you, you, you try to build something to be more idiot-proof, and the universe will just produce a better idiot. Um, but anyways, yeah, so... Um, so uh, Steam counts uh, multiple logins of uh, discrete accounts on the same computer as a discrete system. So when people show up to cyber cafes, they log in with their Steam credentials, blah, blah, blah. That counts as, hey, this person logged in with their computer, which is not an accurate metric. The article goes and asks, well, why, why are they doing it anyways? And the, the, the answer is we don't know. Valve has the actual numbers. Um, they've said they've said as much. And they've said that they are not act- accurate compared to what they have on the Steam Hardware survey, but I, I, I don't know. Apparently, this is the reason Valve isn't interested in fixing this, which is why you should make your game an Epic Store exclusive. <laughs> well, uh, it certainly explains why, you know, despite all of the popularity of Ryzen uh, since the first generation of Ryzen back in uh, 2017, um, that the AMD CPU market has basically stayed the same. Uh, it's actually, if you listened a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about it, and I mentioned that despite, yeah, all that popularity, it's actually gone down slightly. And seeing as most Linux users, even those of us who share uh, their place with uh, someone else, um, we tend to oh, be the only la- ones la- who... Oh, la-di-da, Mr. I-have-a-girlfriend, ooh. Look, look, yes. look at me, Mr. Humblebrag. <laughs> uh... We are the only ones who tend to log in on our machines, and we are the only ones who tend to use Steam on our machines, because no one else wants to deal with that fucking shit. Uh, the... So, yeah, it does. we don't get to, you know, switch seats as much, so it doesn't really rack up those numbers. So that's probably why the Linux market share isn't going anywhere. Mm. I don't know, man. I mean... I, this could possibly explain how come I was like, no one has a 26. I was like, but I have a 20. Apparently I need to go to more internet cafes because that's how that works, right? With, 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 with your 2060. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> plug it plug in it there. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Suppress 2060, man. <laughs> okay. Good news, everyone. All of your collectible uh, hats are now worth nada. Well, sort, sort of, kind of. This is bad news for people who are in the uh, the hat racket, as it were, from uh, PC Gamer. Links to all this are in the show notes. So, apparently there was a glitch in the uh, loot box mechanics for Team Fortress 2 that would actually result in uh, several fairly rare items to be predictably spawnable. And, you know, as it turns out, because people are insane about hats, um, they... Um, the, 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 the gray market is going nuts, the actual market is going nuts... There's a there's a thread on the TFT subreddit saying, "Hey, stop buying and selling and trading until we can get this sorted out because our poor the, this poor economy that we've sunk all our money into <laughs> has been thrown into chaos because of a programming error. Oh my god, we're all going to die." And I mean like, yeah, when when you're getting items that can normally retail uh for like upwards of $100 to appear reliably, clearly, you know, the more the more enterprising minded or enterprising minded of the TFT player base is going to try and capitalize that. And all of a sudden everything becomes devalued because yeah. as, as, as it turns out, putting all your money in digital currency is not maybe the greatest thing. Shut Bitcoin. up. I'm buying Bitcoin. <laughs> Go away. Leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, Dogecoin. Is that still a thing? Guess not. Anyway, Pedro. Yeah. The crates that were supposedly spotting the unusual uh, quality items uh, at one point, their value actually went over what some of those items were valued at. So that is quite impressive because if you've ever been to the uh, Steam marketplace, uh, you will have seen that the crates usually go for like 20p or like 30 cents, something like that. If that, most of them usually go for far lower than that. So if you have a crate that's actually worth like $100... Yeah, something's up with that. <laughs> what I want to find out, how's Valve going to tackle this? Because I think it was yesterday or last night evening. I'm like, okay, we cocked up royally and let's suspend trading on everyone who got the items so they can't sell them and continue the snowstorm. that. But that's a sticky situation, right? When you think about it. Yeah, well, what do they do? Because people are spending people... money. 
legitimately well, at least. got the item. What do you do if like you got the item though, man? You're like, hey, man, I got this fair and square. That was on you. You don't get no taxi backsies. Right, right. And and the the, the article and the and the uh, subreddit post basically goes into like people are suffering anxiety, worrying that um, mm-hmm. worrying that uh, Valve is going to just cancel all these transactions, and all of a sudden. Yeah, they and, don't and need to cancel the transactions. They can just make the items uh, that were, you know, acquired during that period untradeable. So what they're going to do is they're going to train a machine learning algorithm to identify <laughs> uh, which, which which of these items were generate were produced during this window of time, and eventually they'll come up with some sort of solution that they can audit. I don't think they need a machine learning algorithm to do that. <laughs> 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 the uh, hat economy in TF2 has been on long enough that they probably have that system down pat. Mm. I don't know. We thought we'd mention it because some people are definitely down with the hats. And the, the only thing I remember back, like when it first launched on Linux and we got like the, the penguin, little penguin yeah. thing, they, they came up with like a thing for Windows. Was it you could, it would. A single it would, it would, EXE it would, it, that installed. It would, it would install um, virtual I think box it was virtual box. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Virtual Box Ubuntu la- installed Steam, launched it. I think I think you could just like straight up do it through Vagrant, and I think it was just a VXE that just runs Vagrant. Um, yep. Uh, any- and and anyways, it's time to talk about Steam Arch. The big picture based couch <laughs> gaming OS. Gamer OS, the definitive of couch gaming. Okay, what is it? It's an operating system focused exclusively, exclusively on couch gaming experience on A. All right. After installation, what all you need to know this is Steam OS, but it's better. Because it's Arch, baby. Mm. Right? Yeah, I mean... Yes, better. So, so um, there, it, this is this is a uh, thing similar to what uh, Flibit Jibibibibo put together for uh, Fedora um, mm-hmm. to essentially turn it into SteamOS, except they're doing that with Arch and Blackjack and Hookers. Um... So Ven, Ven, you you bring you bring up this uh, you bring up this point in the show notes, and I kind of disagree with it. I, whole, I've been that, accused of far worse. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the whole <laughs> Valve. Forgetting about CMOS. I mean, they kind of said that we're just going to start treating it as this is what we're targeting whenever we like release any sort of Linux software. This is our distribution, which is basically just Debian with a bunch of newer packages. But there's new Debian now. Yeah, they still haven't released CMOS 3. The moral of the story <laughs> is we got just got to use more Arch. Use Dude. more Arch. I don't know. I think this yeah. is a good idea to have something that is SteamOS, but has packages made in the last millennia. That is a very good point. Uh, however, I was looking at the script. It's like, okay, you're supposed to run this while you're booted into the uh, live session of uh, Arch. And basically, it replaces the base installer, and it just installs the bare minimum that you need to run Steam and play your games. Which is great. Don't get me wrong. That is great. And Jordan already mentioned the um, the bits that Flippity had posted on Google+. Plus. Uh, but yeah, this needs to be a bit more distro agnostic, like have something to detect. Okay. You're running a dev you're just system. just pissy because you... it's not on Solus. I don't really care about that. In fact, the Look two at examples the rage. I brought I can, up I can were hear it in your voice. Deb so, so, and RPM so, specifically. So, so, so to me, this, this is more of a curiosity, right? Cause like one of the, one of the big selling points of Steam OS was like, Hey, you fucking install it. It walks you through the easy peasy wizard and you're good to go. Installing it's, arch is not m- the most user friendly experience no. and asking someone to like get in, download a bootstrap image so that they can run a bash script, I think is going to cause a lot of people to like have their eyes roll into the back of their head and they're <laughs> going to start drooling a little bit. Um, know, so man. make it, you know, more disagnostic. agnostic. Give us an option to figure out. It's like, okay, it's a Debian system. So I use this, these commands. It's a, an RPM system. I use these commands or, 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 or better yet, produce some sort of live compact disc that you can use to install this operating system onto your computer machine. Dude, I think we're going to talk about it later, but do you do? I honestly think silver blue could make a very good case for Steam being based on that. Just there's already a flat pack of Steam. Yeah. I I, I yeah. guess. So, I mean I mean so, so Server Blue is kind of it's an interesting proposition. And I'm I'm glad Fedora, like the Fedora project as a whole, says like this is just our like fucking experiment. We're just seeing if we can fucking do this. Like mm-hmm. make a make a fully containerized OS and like not have it run like complete dog shit and be usable. <laughs> um Yes. The the not running like dog shit bit is important. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 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 definitely interested to see what um 
what manifests out of that. But oh my god, Game fighting updates. games under Linux. Yay! Dude. We, we have one finally that works. <laughs> no, in, hey man, Skullgirls works. Uh, that was a long time ago. That was a long Kings time ago. Kung Fu technically works. <laughs> Fantasy Strike. Uh, it's finally out. This has been, they, they sent us keys for this billions of years ago. And I remember just like, you know, after Kings of Kung Fu, it's like, oh, Skullgirls, I enjoyed, but I'm too old for that game. I, what I mean that I'm not physically fast enough to play that shit. Um mm-hmm. But I, I fired this up and I was like, oh, A, it looks gorgeous. Uh, B, it plays like an old school, uh, think more like Street Fighter 2. It, well, it's, it was actually uh, partially designed by one of the Street Fighter 2 devs, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a very good fighting pedigree in the development team for this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and I, I, actually, if you, if, you want, if you want to see what this game is about, uh, go look up a YouTube channel called Weekend Warriors. Uh, they do they do like a really good breakdown of how to get started actually like playing and getting under understanding like the fighting game mechanics using Fantasy Strike. Hmm. Well, okay. I mean, this um, is definitely got some tournaments and stuff with it already, man. Oh yeah. Well, well it's sure, been an early sure. access, but it was like it's easy to learn, hard to master, which is true because every time I play against the AI, I get murder rated hard. <laughs> However, I currently I'm blaming that on the button prompts only being. For PlayStation control. And it's really confusing when I'm trying to learn to play the game. And even though it lets you map them, it's like, okay, well, press your X button, even though I'm telling you to hit the triangle. Like, guy, it's too many steps. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I do like the fact that they let you calibrate your own button prompts, which is a, it's like a, it's an, it's a minor feature that I wish more games would have just because, yeah, like, like you said, when you're, when you're just playing a game and you're like, press, press a, I don't have an a on my controller. What's, what's that button supposed to actually be? Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, they, they've also added a couple of rebalances. Um, they added a boss rush mode with like a improved read it as extra fucky AI. And um, the tutorial videos under Linux now play. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It did have like a movie at the beginning. It's like, oh, hey, that's neat. Did you yeah, notice a movie? That? And yeah, if you go into like the learn how to play, it was supposed to have movies, which never worked. They work now. <laughs> yep. To which I went... I do all too much video. It's like, what did you <laughs> encode this at? The jeez, it's pixelated. Not properly. Is yeah, that. <laughs> that's the thing. But but yeah, like uh, yeah. I mean, we could, we could just here sit here like sucking fantasy strikes. Okay, because like in right terms in, cur- in, term, in terms Hang of game design, now like, let me get a little more comfortable. If we're gonna do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, got got to relax the throat a little bit. A little bit. Um, a little bit. Um, but yeah, like j- just um, make, trying to make like fighting. But whatever, fucking Pedro, talk about. <laughs> Okay, system. Risk System. Uh, it's got a new free expansion. Uh, if you already have the game, it's got a new setting that allows you to skip cutscenes, which is very nice. It's That's always a very good thing to see. Why that wasn't a thing from the start, I don't know, but that's good. Just let people get right into the action. And this is an action game. It's a uh, side-scrolling shmup. Uh, and it looks great. And as I mentioned in the... Uh, Little intro bit. Uh, that, that's planet it, Namek. That's yeah. That's, that's uh, right planet Namek. You say that. The about developers everything. have sent us some keys for it. Yeah, over Curator Connect. So yeah, it's uh, it will most likely see the chair QA edition at some point so because is this, is this it, a, look it says it's like high speed kinetic. Is it a shmup? Is it a top? Is it? It's a shmup. Is it a visual look novel, Pedro? <laughs> look at it. <laughs> It, it, it's secretly DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball. Is what <laughs> this, this, this is going to end up being Frog Fractions 3. I can feel it. <laughs> Currently, it's eight ninety nine, twenty five percent 25% off. Uh, do they have any bizarre fun requirements? System requirements? Nope. No, no. Not really. They even say Ubuntu 1804. That's how you can tell that they didn't actually copy paste. Like, you know, some games say 1204. Ah. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, at least, Speaking at least of which... Depend- at Some, least they don't depend on 1910. Somebody at the rank 1204 just told you to shut your whore mouth, Pedro. <laughs> Speaking of 1204, uh. this next game actually does recommend you one to uh, 1204. <laughs> this is V Empire or Vampire as they uh, spell it out. Then it's Vampire, Batman. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm Batman. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, no, they're. Um, it's a one of those management games i guess because it it is a card game so they say but it doesn't it, have pay to win though 
Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> but it it feels more like a management e type of game, the way that you have to deal the stuff in between the fights, quote unquote. It, it's really heavy quotes around there, because. Oh, what do you play? Well, some pale dork with long hair. Yeah, who, you who, play who, who as a group around of them. with Linux audio. Yeah. You play as the, the home, vampire. <laughs> it's too real. It's too real. real. <laughs> well, but, so, yeah. so what, what, what I found interesting about, like, the conceit of this game is that, like, <laughs> you play as the fucking Habsburgs if they were vampires. So, like, what, they're all hemophiliac? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. what, 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 do, what do you call a hemophiliac vampire? Like, it's, it's not a joke. I genuinely want to know. Um, <laughs> a vampire? I, I don't know. But yeah, the the minimum requirements do say Ubuntu 1204, and that is how you can tell that someone just went to like the Linux uh, template for the uh, minimum system requirements. Well, it's and just straight it, up it's copy a card it. game with mixed reviews. Never seen that before. No, it's not like most of them come out to that or anything. Well, it's only got 18 mixed reviews. <laughs> To its credit. So it barely qualifies to even show the uh, the little score at the top. Hey, okay, got you. <laughs> it's more games than we've... Re well, even with the amount of games we have, based on us. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's that access. one in development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brick Simulator was, 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 was testing the waters. <laughs> Listen, we, we'll, we'll release Brick Simulator when Valve finally gets around to releasing Half-Life 3. Let's Coming up legit. next... Foxy, uh, we need that game. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, it's a real boy, and it's fucking loud. Oh my god, shut up. And we're back, and we'll get into the news very quickly, but uh, before we do, we like to take some time and thank all of you, because you're awesome, and for some reason, you think that we're just on that side of awesome enough that you decide that we're worth your no, money. No, no, that's no, a strong no, no, word, Pedro. man. What do you mean? You're trying to embarrass us. Awesome? <laughs> like, we, we get participation trophies. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 we inspire some awe and, like, the sort of awe they're trying. Like, they, exactly. Um, <laughs> it's the awe. I, I didn't, you know, spell out the E, so, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, you, you, you cuties can head on over to linuxgamecast.com, click that support button, or really hover over it, and you can find a no. number of ways to support it's us. confusing. Uh, yeah, or, or, or worst comes to worst, you can always head on over to patreon.com slash linuxgamecast. I mean, best comes to best. Best comes to worst. Worst to best. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to hang out with the worst people, you can uh, become a Patreon that gets you access to the uh, Discord channel, where all all of us awful people sort of hang out the other six days of the week. <laughs> get access to the show notes, which is pretty nifty. Get your name in the credits. We'll I, I think, maybe we'll I read think it a lot. Like, because somebody's gonna be like, "Yeah, man, scum and villainy Discord," and they're gonna get there and be like, "Wait." Where's my scum and villainy? This is like a bunch of shit people. Like, <laughs> There's people talking about and Linux going, yeah. and getting shit to work. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 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 I mean, I mean, we joke, but it's pretty tame. So we need you to come in and make it worse. Also, we have IRC completely. That's live for yep. anyone, man. This is yep. this is this is the this is the true true. Uh, we got we got we got wish lists. Pedro and I have wish lists. If you want to, you know, make it rain on top of our bodies, you can go. <laughs> And ch check out what we have on there, and buy us some stuff to help out uh, ma making making better content for you. Like, like we said, it's not it's not better quality making content, better but looking content. But yeah, better better yes, looking, better, better sounding. Content. Same dumb <laughs> us, higher quality. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but you know, if you, if you if you if you're watching one of those videos that then posts on Patreon to instruct people on how to do this, and you say, I need I need some no. No, I'm, I'm I'm suggesting to the audience for the audio listeners, like, don't do that to yourself. That's maddening. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Well, I, I, I mean, if, if you if you want if you want to try and reproduce it, you might need some hardware. You can head on over to the studio list on Amazon, where we list all the stuff that we use for lighting. Every single theater, thing. If you storage, see something on the yeah. show and you're like, hey, I wonder what that is. This is where you go. This is not how we're supposed to use it, but I mean, it's us. That's a good way to do it. Go buy it on yep. UEG for all we care. But at least the information is there. It's documented stuff I use. Stuff uh, Jordan has and uh, stuff Pedro uses. So indeed, that's there, but, guaranteed to work with Linux. But you know, may maybe you just want to confuse your friends and worry your neighbors. You can maybe buy yourself a Linux Gamecast T-shirt by heading on over to store.linuxgamecast.com. Buy a weekly Daily Wednesday shirt, a Hell Elk shirt. Buy something. Tell people you're a Francophile. People will be like, "What the hell's a Francophile?" <laughs> and then you'll just have to break down in tears because there's no point I'm in sorry. trying to explaining it. I'm sorry, Frank. He's normally not <laughs> like this. 
I, I'm I'm not. Fuck you, Frank. Fight me. Fight me IRL, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, but we, we, we got we got we got mouse pads, we got stickers, we got all sorts of fun stuff that you can adorn yourself and your possessions with to make it very, very clear that you like a Q-list Linux gaming podcast. Okay. Q is generous. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what we want to. That's the Smash oh, Zed. It's, it's out in the wild. They, they smack it, smack it, baby. To the YouTubers, uh, the backers have started receiving. This is like legit. And they're like, hey, man, uh, we need your address. We're going to ship you that thing you backed 30 years ago. I'm slightly exaggerating. This is like 27 years ago. Let's be real. Um, there's a video. It's out. And all I can say is it's loud. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, so like, so I, I have the Nintendo Switch, and it similarly has a uh, less than ideal thermal profile. Um, but when the fan starts going, it, it's it's audible; you can hear it. But it's not as bad as like the freaking head, the headset mic that this guy is wearing. Or I guess he's not wearing a headset mic; it's like a lav mic. But it it picks up this. It reminds me of like a server fan almost, like when you walk into a data center and like you just get the cascade of just this whirring re noise from the fans that are just slowly but surely killing your hearing uh so, sorry about that sis admins yeah it's okay though because you can't hear a damn word i'm saying um but yeah <laughs> apparently the performance isn't there mm. well, yeah that's one of the things i saw man um 100 because it does struggle with doom 2016 on windows yeah mind you they're like what Linux? uh uh, well, you know, that's, I guess you could technically install that on there. Um, it, it kind of has like an extra, like long, uh, Atari Lynx vibe going to it, but I think everyone said that. However, yeah, they he even brought up the Atari Lynx, uh, in the video and he put it like in front of it. It's like, yeah, it's basically the exact same size and form factor. Oh, it's longer. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I draw probably draw the a better comparison to the Game Gear because it will consume about a similar rate of battery. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You're being generous. I was going to say my uh, I had a TurboGrafx 16 portable growing up. Ooh, Dude, ooh, 35 yeah. minutes maybe if you had the screen all the way down. Damn, this is 100 yeah. true. Hey, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're right, Mr. Red. You can buy them, and look at the prices on Brad for four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. You're looking at 6.99. Kick that yep. up to eight gigs, 128 gigs of storage, 899. And if you want the Smash Z Ultra, 16 Ultra. gigajoules of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage with a five megapixel camera, only 1099. Oh. 1099. 1100 fucking dollars. What the fuck? Well, why do you hate freedom? <laughs> I don't hate freedom. It's running Windows. What the hell? <laughs> and yeah, they, they got the prototype out to one, a single YouTube person. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's listen, like, okay. Man, listen, reviews cost money. It's, I mean, sure it, 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 I mean, it's true. If you if you want good reviews on IGN, you got to pay. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, you got to uh, pay. Uh, 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 <laughs> otherwise, the wise Mountain Dew Doritos Poobah will give your game a three out of ten. <laughs> you know what 100% I mean we're right on it. it's been a bit lower performance uh, it's basically what everyone has expected I think everyone's prepared themselves but I do want to give the team credit for actually making this I yeah kudos for actually like come ending up on a product I lost that bet 100% yeah 100% well we've seen a prototype we haven't seen you know the actual retail product yet uh well i think that's what they were showing in the video yeah that's, that's the prototype that's the same one that they used for like it, uh, wait, did it come in its prototype package inventions it, well I, I mean let, let, if you watch the video pedro the prototype was a, effectively a dumb terminal though because they hooked it up to an actual oh it was just ship. a screen with a controller yeah <laughs> yeah th that wasn't a prototype that prototype. was just lies <laughs> anyway all right stay tuned all right a A AMD graphics power, Neon, Jason, Nis Evangelion's back. And he's talking about the R A R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R the thing, though, is that uh, Mesa currently does not support the uh, 5700 XT via 
Rad V. Um, there are, uh, you will, you will still, you will, if you want to actually use this card, you're going to need to use AMD GPU pro, which is really only available on CentOS or Ubuntu 18.04. So what this guy's saying is, you know, install, install 18.04, install the drivers, do the in place upgrade, and then you can use the, the card sort of kind of, except here's the, here's the problem, Brad is the, uh, AMD GPU pro drivers are professional targeted drivers. They're not really meant for gaming performance. They're meant for CAD. They're meant for simulations. They're meant for natural language processing. And so when you try to game on them, you get a bad time. Uh, so I would take these benchmarks. With a big old I'm a gaming salt. professional. So he's a professional yeah. driver. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, he, 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 do, he does, he does have some, he does have some benchmarks. And as it turns out, the, the thing with the ill-suited driver performs worse under Linux. So surprise, su I wouldn't give everyone no. a point of reference for this. The only thing I had laying around and installed currently was rise of the tomb Raider. So on the 1920 X, which is like two generations back with the Ryzen's, uh, with a 2060, uh -huh. which is uh, the cheapest, you know, two series that you can get from Nvidia. We were seeing on, uh, Linux was get averaging 102 at 1440. Uh, so just like useless data point, I managed to get like 79. Yeah, 79.63. So it is faster than a regular, not super thanks for asking, 2060. 2060. Even All with right. the professional drivers. Professional drivers. Yes, but I'm 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 sure I'm sure with stuff like ACO and you know Mesa and you know drivers that you know people work on and test against games, mm -hmm. you'll probably see a little bit better performance gains. Listen, man, this has always been the advantage of AMD. Your card will <laughs> genuinely be faster to you. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> as long this, as you this, can live with it true. not being very fast for that year ish. And uh, on top of that, the reference or frontier edition or whatever the hell AMD is calling their base level entry cards um, uh, nowadays, Man manifest destiny edition, basically, uh, don't buy the fifty seven hundred series with that stupid blower cooler that they have on them. They get really hot and really loud. Uh, it, we're talking normal operating temperature in the high 80 Celsius. D -d 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 just don't, just don't do it. <laughs> do it. Buy two of them. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Because yeah, the, uh, the supposedly the like add in board partners will be releasing their um, own versions of the graphics cards. Uh, I think it's in August. So yeah, just wait for those because those will be better. Um, I guess you can buy the like water block, the custom water block to put on the new Radeon 5700 XD and the regular Radeon 5700. But just just wait for the add-in board partners. They'll be cooler. Way cooler. Okay, so so buy them right now. Got it. Understood. Up next, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to humble with a multi bundle. But we do have to give it a mention because you scroll through it and you're like, "What's going on here? This is God. Uh, nope, nope. Apple Windows. Oh, there's Hang one. one. One Linux game. Brony the game. Blessed edition. <laughs> right. That's the hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag blessed yeah. edition. You get Barony, and that's the one Linux game in this bundle. But hey. If you're like me and you bought this uh, bundle because you wanted Killing Floor 2, mm -hmm. which was supposed to come to Linux, but we're on that trip why it, it decided it, it, not it to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Make sure you slide like the little uh, sliders where you can choose where your money goes. <laughs> Remember, kids, be petty like Pedro. Yes. That's what the, <laughs> that's what the P like stands me. for. Pe petty Pedro. <laughs> a new series coming to BBC um, this fall. <laughs> the Petty Portuguese Pedro, yes. Triple P, man. The, the Pedro, the Pedro shop boys. <laughs> Anyways, so so, uh, uh, but you know, for for games that aren't Linux native, how what what sort of value do I get out of this thing, this bundle? You know, one one thing you can justify: a, it's got a Linux game, so hundred mm -hmm. percent. I mean, you can buy it for that. Whoa <laughs> I was interested. I, you know, just going through because hey, we got Proton now. When I say that, it's like, but you got Lutris and Wine. Yes, I'm lazy and I'm old. I got a play button. That that's the extent I'll go through to get a game to work. I'll like, I'll click play and I'm like, did it work? Oh, womp womp. The um, Death Garden Blood Harvest is like that looks neat. And all this is multiplayer. So I was like, oh, looking for possibilities for you know the streams that we do during the week. 
Of course, I installed that, and it ate poo because it requires a uh, Battle.net Play Spy. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> apparently that's still an issue, so it's like, womp, womp. But yeah, I'm kind of like Pedro. I I justified buying this so I could get Killing Floor 2 because, damn it, yeah. we deserve to play that. <laughs> It's like Killing Floor 1, it had some issues running in NVIDIA video cards on Linux, but it, 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 it worked on Linux. It was one of the first games that was available on Steam for Linux. <laughs> yes, this is true. And, 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 and look how that turned out. Well, I mean, hey, we, we, we got to play something. Eventually, we got to get around to, we can put it off what we want, is uh, we're going to set up a Patreon goal for... The Wolfenstein. The Wolfenstein. The young blood, we're gonna we're gonna subject ourselves to that, and maybe some other people too, because I think it's more than two player, right? I thought the whole point of it was that it was two player. I don't know. I can't count either, and we're gonna play that on Ultra <laughs> Mega Hard. So of, co- of, of of course, we're 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 gonna we're gonna do the same thing with Planet Badass whenever that comes out. We just fucking crank it up and turn friendly fire on and see how long we can survive. Bring it, cupcakes. So sad news. Yeah, sad news. Defiant Development. Uh, if you don't know who they are, uh, they are the developers of no, Pedro, Hand of Fate. Who day? Yeah, they develop Hand of Fate. Uh, we threw chairs at both of the Hand of Fate games, uh, and despite the, the, them the not, Manos duology, yes, uh, despite them not being uh, perfect, they certainly had some flaws, but they were actually really nice games for a relatively small team. Uh, they were really nice games and now well they decided they're not going to continue making games anymore and the final game that they were working on that you can see the uh, trailer if you're watching the video version uh they have look at that of course it's something and i was like yes yeah yeah oh look it looks it looks amazing from this freaking trailer of course they fucking canceled it i I don't care i mean even though it has like the hex squares and but see this was always the brilliance you know, even they said, hey, man, we, we try to make games that are like, you know, a little bit different or a little lot different. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of the things they said. And they did that with Mano's Hands of Master Fate. This, <laughs> they're doing the same thing. It's like they're going to mix an adventure game in with like stupid grid based hex bullshit that I don't care about. Kind of like they did with Hand of Fate 2. But I was like, okay, give me enough action brawly stuff and I'm going to sit through the card stuff. Yeah. yeah, but un- 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 unfortunately, like that's the thing. Not not all game developers survive long enough to be swallowed up by, by EA and have their properties ruined thoroughly. Sometimes they die before that. Um, um, I I will say on behalf of they've always been excellent uh, with making Linux ports. Hey, Epic, mm-hmm. do something fucking good. Save these yeah. guys. Yeah, buy <laughs> shave them. Buy a company. It's like okay, we'll just give you money and we won't make you release exclusives only no they're they'll they'll do that that'll they'll, be part and <laughs> sweeney finds a way baby come on yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like you, you don't make a deal with the devil and expect to not go to hell right you, you don't like, mess around with velocity fair. Yeah. yeah utah sweeney's so, a whole different monster all right <laughs> all right uh, red, red hat, hat hates yeah. they or, hate they ooh. hate gaming oh my god yeah so chris Wright uh from uh, the cto red hat did a bit of an ama on our red hat earlier in the week uh and puimbra hola uh asks uh, is there any intention to actively enter or support gaming under linux to which uh to which he says well you know what no we <laughs> we we re- we reckon we ne- recognize that gaming plays an important role in computing However, we are an enterprise Linux company, and our product mm-hmm. sur- products surround enterprise Linux, which is not gaming. They do, they, uh, but they do say like they do support other projects that um, help gaming. They, they uh, Red Hatters help run the open source game jam. Uh, back back at um, one, one of the Linux conferences, they're using Lutris to demo uh, gaming under Fedora. It's not like they they don't care about it because they the the guy even mentions that like. Uh, gaming is sort of like the gateway for developers. Lots of, I would say about 80% of programmers are actually failed game developers because making games is fucking hard and yep. you can get paid for doing a lot less for a much lower effort job. Probably a lot more actually. Um, so th- I mean, they, they, they throw money at it. They, they, they support stuff like blender and, and um, other, other, other projects that enable, you know, people to actually create content for games, but that's, that's not their focus. It's mm-hmm. like it's like it's like uh, it's like asking Dyson to make a mop, right? It's not their it's not their market <laughs> space. 
I'm sure, you know, Red Hat would be more than happy to get some money from companies like Valve or literally anyone else by, you know, supporting them and getting their back end up and running to deliver everything. But I, I, I don't see them making a desktop gaming operating system. Oh, come on, man. The, yeah. the Zen series <laughs> IBM hat red. Uh, that, 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 that's what gamer os is for man it's Don't gonna you. run power <laughs> shut the hell up and it's gonna be awesome it's going to run red arts dude when i read that i was like yeah red hats they've done their part you know mm -hmm. yeah didn't uh katana have something to say in, uh... Yo, i mean i mean i, I brought it up Kat okay. uh, katana yeah. was the one who mentioned up that, that at scale they were showing off uh, lutris uh running on fedora keeping everyone honest that's good to yep. see. Yo. Hey, we got a little bit of news from Feral, and no, it's not about Tomb Raider because why not? No, we, no, this no. Is, so, uh, uh, when, when, this is one of the projects that uh, Feral puts out. Actually, this is one of the few open source projects that they put out. Uh, it's called Game Mode. They originally started up because, like, um, I, th I think I think it was actually like the first Tomb Raider game. There, th there was a big forum poster like, "Hey, you have to turn your perform your performance governor to perform or your CPU governor to performance, otherwise our games will run like shit." Uh, but instead of doing that, they've created a daemon uh, service that will run in the background that allows games to like alter the current running mode of the system so that you know that you don't have to perform these steps manually. Uh, and they uh, they just released a new version 1.4. Um, flat pack apps can now um, hit the game mode service through Dbus, and they have a bunch of uh, a whole whack of uh, Dbus refactors. And they've even added an environment variable for you to stick command preferences like. Um, up the run or primus run or prime so if you have to like prefix or if, you, if you're using one of those uh weird things that forces that creates like another accession to run your game because that improves performance somehow um it, it can it can do that for you now as well which is pretty handy actually so yeah and how many if what if i run two x three x sessions then you're a wizard. Is it linear? All right, brilliant. <laughs> you're a wizard, harry uh but with stuff like the Athenium, um game launcher client which was like uh one we talked about a month or two ago um they say that they're like the libre alternative to steam and that basically it comes as a flat pack and it provides a bunch of games uh in their library as flat packs it's open source games obviously uh but with this and with uh, game mode actually pulling up it's like okay i recognize that uh thing that's running that's just put the cpu governor to performance right now that's a very good thing to see it's a very good thing to see <laughs> yeah it, it it addresses a real problem that um it is lot, something of, like this is very handy on a mobile i mean oh yeah on a laptop. yeah yeah yeah, yeah uh, there, uh, to be fair like a, lo a lot of default configs for a lot of distributions tend to be a lot of very tend to be very conservative when it comes to power consumption because mm -hmm. the the assumption is that you're probably going to end up throwing this on a laptop or a desktop and either way you don't want your power bill to shoot through the fucking roof indeed yeah. all right pedro p baby you're the only one of us to not have escaped europe um so you get to talk about football i mean soccer <laughs> yeah yeah well this is one is uh, actual soccer which is a really really old uh football game uh from the early early 90s and 95. the source code 95 uh and the source code is now available Has just on been GitHub. dumped in one big yeah one. straight yeah, up everything a... there's uh some exes thrown in there but the most uh most of the files are like header files c files c++ files some object files thrown in and a couple of document files uh, in the mix. But yeah, it is everything. Straight up everything to get Actua Soccer uh, up and running. Mm. Go ahead and figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, according to Wikipedia, Actua Soccer was actually one of the first uh, games released on home consoles that was designed with an all 3D engine, which I guess is of minor historical significance. Also, I mean, it's English Premier's league soccer football sauce so but uh, I mean, we, we we don't have we don't have sports <laughs> games on linux sports games are a draw people enjoy them and the more types of games we have on linux the better case we can make for it so this is something yeah i, I this is definitely one of the things that you think of fighting games the unicorn you, you, you get the vapors and fall over and f pass out if you get a sports game like ea i can imagine oh that's gonna be weird uh, th those are just microtransactions games nowadays like I said, True, but, but but again, they they make money. 
They make money. They people do. buy them. They people do. people spend money on them. They do want to make a point, though. I mean, uh, that they're kind of like throwing a disclaimer on the uh, GitHub page. You know, this is for historical interest and research because uh, the source code is available, but it was never released or however you want to throw that. So it's released under attribution, uh, non-commercial, no derivative, four point not international Creative Commons license. So yeah, the, uh, don't do anything was, with it. Was, wasn't this from uh, archive.org as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. So there you go. <laughs> Archive.org, so, doing great things. You should give them money. The aristocrats. If you do, do something with it. Just don't advertise it. Shh. Or port, port, port it to Linux and then... Put it on Nintendo Steam. Will, They'll never yeah, notice. Nintendo, yeah. I was, was going to say <laughs> Call Nintendo it will send else. you a cease and desist, <laughs> even though it was exclusive. It was, it was like a PlayStation game. Like, not so actual soccer. Something like that, yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Mm. Well, coming up next... We we're, we're apparently we're we're taking a trip back to, in time to when Rob Ford ruled Toronto and all the money was replaced by chicken nuggets. Stay tuned for that. When asked Conan what is best in life, we reply: the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and also Feddorf. And then, only then, may the question be asked: Is it fun? This week, we're taking a look at Streets of Rogue from Matt Dabrowski, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. Very, very expensive game, or you could probably grab it on a bundle. That's what we did. Well, actually, that's what they did. I actually paid full price for it. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. What is it? Streets of Rogue is a roguelite about player choice, freedom, and anarchic fun. The game takes inspiration from fast-paced top-down roguelikes like The Binding of Isaac and Nuclear, Nuclear Throne and adds freeform, exploration-driven, emergent gameplay elements of RPGs like DSX. Let's get started. How does this run on Fedorf? Fedorf, baby, is best. Dorf, I'm running uh, Fedorf 30. Uh, with kernel 5.2, whatever I got it set up on, on a 1920 uh, thread-ripping business, uh, 32 gigajoules of RAM, NVMe drives, all that, powered by 2060, should be able to handle this juggernaut. And it did. Uh, really no complaints here. They seem to have fixed, like, the biggest issue we've had with this game was that it didn't launch. So mm -hmm. they've taken care of that in their own special way, because I hope you like 1024 by 768 because uh, if you don't, you're going to be resetting your resolution every time you start the game. At least over here, that's what I had to deal with. However, I was able to, after much cycling, get to 3840 by 2160 UHD. Ran at 60, best I could tell. Graphics, not an issue. Fluid hipster pixel goodness. Uh, controls, x controller, the wireless. Worked out of the box. I didn't have to dick around with anything, and I like that. Pretty good experience. So, you know... On the QA, I give a clean bill of health, man. Solid green. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3064 bit with the i7 6700K, I have the mitigations turned on because I'm a freaking security minded individual. I also got a 1080 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM. Um, does it launch? Yes, it does. Uh, it'll ask you at the beginning whether or not you want to play this uh, in a window or in full screen. And then it kind of gives you a bloop and noop for about 30 seconds and then it actually starts. So, I mean, it technically launches performance at 1080p of, doesn't it kind of leave you hanging right there like when it launches mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's 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 a little spooky you know you don't know you don't know until you press the button and it's like oh it's fine um yeah performance at 1080p it's fucking pixels i hope my 1080 ti can run that if not i probably have some sort of specter vulnerability mitigation stuff running on my 1080 which i, I don't even know anymore um graphics yeah also pixels uh you do get a little bit of character blind sometimes especially because um, all of the people you see in like, um, are actually playable characters. So sometimes there are, um, there are like duplicates of you or your buddies and it gets a little confusing at times. Um, they, they have, they have a thing to like identify friend or foe, but it's active. So you have to have press the button and controls. Yeah. WASD works fine. So does the PlayStation 4 controller, uh, four chairs on the Fedora. What about Solace? Yeah. And on Solace, or Solace, as it's more uh, commonly referred to, uh, it works just fine. Uh, I'm running the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, and it, yeah, it launches. Uh, it launches in a window, uh, and then it goes to whatever you set it to, which I guess is a good thing, because as Ven already mentioned, yeah, it didn't run at all um, when you first launched it a while back, but they figured it out. The performance, yeah, it it's locked at 60, um, be it at 2160 or at 1080p, so it's very good. The graphics, it's not exactly hipster pixel, but it's not far off. Everything works, though, so it's not getting dinged any chairs for that. 
the controls. You can rebind everything on that initial screen that you get the first time you launch the game. Yeah, you can rebind everything and it, yeah, it respects those rebinds. So four chairs from me. Fantastic. Well, there you go. That's the diagnostic information so you can figure out if this thing will run on your computer box Never. for great justice. What about fun, though, Ben? Did you enjoy your time playing Streets of Rogue? Oh. Streets of Rouge. Okay, welcome back uh, to Roguelike Procedurally Generated Hipster Pixel Month here at LGC Labs, because we've been doing a lot of that. Um, you know what? At least this little fucker has a sense of humor about it, and that goes a long way with me. Even in a genre like multiple stacked upon top of each other. It's like, I don't like it, but uh, maybe laugh. It's got that going for it. Uh, really happy about that. You pick a class, assign a tribute, uh, you attempt to snick around and end up punching your way out of situations. Kind of like Wolfenstein that I'm playing on Fridays. So we're almost done with that. Because half of the time, RNG Jesus doesn't generate option two. It tries. It's like, hey, there's multiple ways around this problem. No, you, you just got to fight your way out. Um, I rather like the soundtrack. It has that going for it 100%. And you know what? It, it's good for a quick romp and like the occasional chuckle because it, it's got a good sense of humor about itself in the game. But it, it's not really much in the way of depth. I gotta say that. And with a variety, you don't, no matter the reskin, you're still playing a half shuffled version of the same level. But it does have online multiplayer, so there probably is like some unintentional hilarity to be found in that alone. But at the end of the day, take that shot. At 1999, I gotta say pass, but this is only if you don't like roguelites, you don't like procedurally generated, you don't like hipster pixel stuff. If that's your jam, all right, that's a fair price. But even if you don't like any of that, like me, if you see it on sale or if you see it in a bundle, go ahead and yoink it because, you know, it's not bad. And coming from me, you can consider that a glowing fucking endorsement. So I'll give it two cheers with a sort of one. All right. Yeah. I mean, it does kind of feel like GTA 2 with the little tiny blocky procedurally generated level. And yeah, then you bring up a very good point. Like all the levels are very, very samey. I really wish that they... uh had a little better variety with the towel sets because like there are definitely like oh wait no this was the same layout of the town from two levels ago um but yeah the, the gameplay feels solid enough there's a plethora of options for doing your missions uh but you know like ben said sometimes you're stuck with what you have um your starting class actually really helps a lot with that if you want to do like the non-combat route you got to pick something like the thief or um some of the other the ones that you kind of walk over yeah, yeah, I, 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 I switched it up because I wanted to try a couple ones. I once I unlocked the gorilla, I was exclusively playing as the gorilla because that's just great. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes you just gotta cheese the AI. But like, it's it's neat because like you can knock on doors and windows and people re will like respond in a semi. I don't I don't want to say realistic, but they respond in the way that you would expect them to. So that that's that's pretty nifty. What, um, what did you think? Like the first time you get a hold of somebody, like a partner, and it was like, "Hey, man, just be careful with the fight and all that." Yes, the AI is really that stupid. Oh, it is fucking dumb. There's a, there's but, but there's a couple. Did you see the there's screen a, where it explains this to you? Like, yes, the AI. I, is, I, I, may, maybe it, I don't. It comes think... up on the screen. They're like, "Yes, our AI is really that dumb. Go for it." Well, for, for for me, it was like, rescue this person. All right, so I rescued the person. And then they immediately, like, walked into a turret and got murdered, and then the mission <laughs> failed. And you're just like, mm -hmm. well, well, shit. Like, I couldn't I couldn't have helped that. There's nothing I could do. But that that's kind of the thing with uh, roguelikes is you kind of have to sort of accept the fact that you're not always going to get what you want. You just got to try your best and hope for hope for things to work out. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's some RPG mechanics, but they do feel a little tacked on. Uh, I feel like they were trying to go for something a little West of Loathing style, but that mm. didn't. They didn't convey that all that well, and I really wish they put a little bit more effort into making these options ha feel like they actually are something. Um, I think doing this in multiplayer would definitely be fun. It has both couch and online multiplayer. Um, but I feel that any sort of like stealth alternative gameplay shit just like goes out the window because. When one of your team members, then we'll just start shooting people, and then it's just whatever you got to deal with it. Uh, I will give it three chairs because I actually quite enjoyed it, and I, th I can see the uh, potential. Um, I will say though, don't pay full price for it like me. Be a smarty. Don't pay retail. Yeah, don't pay retail. <laughs> yeah, I like roguelikes and roguelites, 
Uh, I've sunk a few hours into The Binding of Isaac Rebirth and even more hours into Enter the Gungeon. This one, however, I didn't really feel compelled to go back to. Um, it's like in Isaac, you have the usual roguelite mechanics, uh, and um, it the game it's uh, it complements those mechanics with a completely different, um, or at least different in what you're used to when it comes to like video games. The like the lore around it it makes things a that bit extra grim, uh, and I really like that. It made uh, Isaac that bit more uh, interesting for me. This one has you clicking through text boxes for about 10 minutes before you get into the game proper. And by the end of the tutorial, I was done. Uh, after 10 minutes, I knew exactly what I thought about this game, and despite having played over an hour of it, I, I didn't change my opinion. I saw the gameplay loop, I saw exactly what they were trying to do with it, but I didn't enjoy it. As a game so i it, one chair all right well there you go Pedro oh. eats it, so you should buy it 100 percent dude um I, I think there's something to be said for that I mean, like, this, this is like if i was gonna make a pedro like cocktail uh <laughs> I, I would have most of these elements in here and if i was like going to make anti-venom oh um <laughs> i would use the same uh game and mixes it up however i'm like Meh, it, it, it does not right job I, I guess it's bad enough in that where i liked it i i really didn't like it and again games like enter the gungeon this is very similar to enter the gungeon but it's just not there so yeah, I, yeah. I, I, just, I just like I just like the idea that we're playing in like a like a post-apocalyptic Rob Ford run Toronto because like the the, in, the intro sketch is like okay they're just making fun of Rob Ford at this place point oh <laughs> so, right. chicken hate, nuggets chicken chicken nuggets yeah right, do you hate right. it bad um, enough to where we play it Tuesday we can play Pedro? it on Tuesday challenge pissing <laughs> all right challenge pissing all right coming up next we talk various potato strategies and why the stadia should really be called the potato okay once upon a time um certain uh, singer by the name of Freddie Mercury I, legend I, that he was said that the show must go on but let's face it if you've put up with us this long, chances are you really want this to end soon. What do you give that, uh, Jordan? I mean, I mean, I mean what, uh, like this is the, this is this is the sequel to the show must go on. Please turn the show off. Yeah, I'll give that three cheers. I mean, that's not too bad of a recovery. <laughs> All right, <laughs> look, I got a little bit lost in my train of thought, but hey, if you'd like to let us know exactly at which points during the show we got lost in our range of thought. You can go to lacegamecast.com. Trains of thought. Trains uh, of thought. <laughs> you can uh, go to lacegamecast.com, hit the contact button. Make sure you pick LGC Weekly as the show that you're sending your hate mail to, and we will feature it right here, right now. If you're a game developer and you'd like to, um, you know, have the three of us have a look at your game, make sure to send us three keys uh, or like a build that we can share amongst all of us sandwich you name it man we're easy yeah basically as long as all of us can play it we will have a look at your games so that's not good unless you're that one developer with that mobile not even mobile it's like some web-based game i get dude calm down we're not interested <laughs> Did, did you did you guys get the email about the first FE, SEC like accredited in game currency or some shit? Mm -mm. Yes, that, yes, that, uh, that, that, the that, that, PR one. Yeah, that, that, that. That, that, that one came in earlier. This any, any anyways, <laughs> uh, we, we 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 got hate mail. The first one is from Don, and he says it takes about so a moon of an hour in the oven, <laughs> <laughs> and I still prefer the oven to the microwave. I preheat the preheat the oven to four twenty five Fahrenheit. Coat the potato in a thin layer of olive oil, some sea salt, wrap it in aluminum foil, then put it in the oven for sixty seventy six minutes, depending on the size of the potatoes. So this is in response. I I think uh, episode three fifty nine was asking like, what's your favorite uh, baked potato uh, recipe? And so Don gave us. And actually, honestly, it doesn't sound too bad. I'm microwave. Okay. 
My, microwave if you want a fast potato here and now, but like if you have 60 to 78 minutes and uh, a clock that goes to moon, I believe this is the recipe you well, want no, to I go with. I believe it was like the Hedberg head thing. It's like you just put a potato in the oven just in case, right? Yeah. Maybe you bought it. Was, was that the one that I said just like get the pre-fried uh, oven chips that you put in the oven for like 15 minutes? I think you, you brought up some ridiculous chips. nonsense like that. I was like, wow, really? I remember yeah. there was like a McCain fries <laughs> commercial where someone like straight up cooks it in a like like a clothing dryer, and I'm like, is that even possible? Can you do this? Are th- I don't think if, it if, gets if I, that if I, warm. If I stick French fries in a dryer, will it just catch fire? I'm not sure. That really sounds like there's a bunch of funky ass smelling dryers in the world today. Yeah, oh, don't you mean don't you mean it's amazing smelling dryers? Oh no, shit, possibly. All right, anyways. Up next, we have Matthias, and uh, he's asking about Stadia. Why are Linux gaming quote-unquote communities super happy about Stadia? It's not Linux gaming if you're playing it on a TV. Stop acting like it's a good thing. Ah. Okay, fair. That's, that's a fair point. However, we know that Stadia is running on Linux and is running on Vulkan, and... Um, to be fair, we are a bit guilty of that because it's like, okay, there's a Linux version of that. Can we get that on desktop Linux, please? No. Because you're already making the binaries for Linux, so it no. wouldn't really do you any... It, no? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that that's that's the Ubisoft response. Um, well, Ubisoft yeah. would make a native <laughs> Linux port, but they wouldn't get their um, client launcher on Linux. They're like, yeah, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't I, install Uplay on Linux, so sorry. <laughs> actually, shit! I just realized I I I I, I go to, I go to the gym with uh, with the lady who's a developer for Ubisoft. I should ask her about that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> where are Linux? Where are how Linux? How do you know that? <laughs> yeah, how do you we, know? D- does she wear a T-shirt? She's like, what's up? <laughs> Origin developer in the house. Do you actually walk up to people and strike conversation with them? Listen, man, it's only no, it's the polite thing to do I, if you're going to lick them anyway. <laughs> True. I mean, yeah, no. Jordan Jordan Swung would like a word with you. (laughs) Yes, Jordan Swung, serial sexual harasser. That's 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 what I am. I've never sexually harassed a person by licking them. (laughs) Then you're not. Then you're not trying hard enough. It's creepy, but not sexual. Yeah, I I think it's a Canadian thing, man. (laughs) Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to scream at us, do what Pedro said, but like correctly, and it'll be brilliant with YouTube and all that because. I think on that bombshell, if I can cue the music. No. Nope. No music. No music. <laughs> you didn't arm track five, then. You didn't arm track five. <laughs> ha! Ah, music. It's armed. It's armed and dangerous. You can always find us around 9, wait, 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. While we're hanging out doing this nonsense with you live an hour before that. It's Patreon Hop in Discord. Um, we got audio for the pre-pre Super Shows. And get in touch with me. Say hi. On the Twitters, at Vinstone, if you're going to send me a DM, at Reply Me on regular Twitter so I know that you sent me a DM and then don't get cranky because I didn't see it. All right? That's kind of brilliant. Isn't, and, isn't that like isn't that like emailing someone to tell them that you're going to call them or you something? See, the thing with Twitter is yeah. <laughs> you got like your regular DMs from people you follow, then you got like the unauthorized DM uh, thing that I never fucking check. Not out of like, oh, I'm too good for that. I just never think to check it, so... Scream at me properly. That's all I ask. Uh, and I'm at Vin, I think, just at Vin or Vin Stone, on mast.linuxgamecast.com, being all federated and shit. Yes, I, I, I'm I, I'm Jordan Swung. If you want to slide into my DMs, you can follow me at The Burning Fool on Twitter, at Frojo at mast.linuxgamecast.com. And I usually have a little crack at the end of it, but I can't think of one that's not horrible. So, Pedro, tell us a horrible joke. Don't your face uh in any I said case, horrible joke not easy joke i <laughs> i am peter Matheus. you can find me at unaccounted for on twitter or just at unaccounted for on twitter i i do have a mass athletics game cast.com login but I, I never honest, go there considering the shape he's in right now you did good little buddy good 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 job not bad. Uh, Freaking yeah. six point three percent beers, man. That's all love. I'm saying. <laughs> he, he, he gets the golf clap. <laughs> I get the one clap. You, you really know, you just ha- you just you just have the clap. <laughs> <laughs>
You can make his hands clap. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm in. We got to thank our Theron, Mr. Fox Dog, MT, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barb Bramp, but the Drummer 7, Aldius, Kaplo, Makik, Scoot, and all the lovely producers. Read their names super fast as a scroll by. Oh, my God. Demento, Renee, Martin, Jill, Steve, Kim, Daniel, Techman, Simcha, Ryan, Jordan, Mir, Matt, Ryan, Linux News, Alejandro, Mustard, Crack, McLean, Brad, Ram, My Smashly G, Pablo, Max, Shane, M. Langston, Massavoni, Luke W, Christopher C, Zoe, Mini Jack, Nine, Sherwig, Von Havenstein, That's Sign, Eric, Sven, Colstad. If you send us some hardware, you get on the fuck wall, like Mike G or Linux Nuru or Maddie. Uh, Chugi, buy stuff Aldeus, off our wish list. Tim, yeah. Jill, Steve, Lutris, that's Frenchie, Dan, Erod, John M, M Red, Kalakia, <laughs> Admiral JT, I'm going to do this. Mir, N Mag, Ryan M, J, J Rulio, Jelly Bean, Haplo, J- running out of oh, Yeah, bitches, I did it. I, I, I also read it as J Rulio, but it's J Rulio, and it's J Rulio. It is. J Rulio! Fly, you Frank, fly. <laughs> Not the Death Star! <laughs> nope. <laughs> Damn it! That's how we get them monetized. You stopped it with your magic. <laughs> uh, with my with my dark side powers, I am the Sith Lord, and Pedro is my crappy apprentice. He's like the Darth Maul of Linux Gamecast. In that we thought he was dead, but he just keeps coming back for some fucking reason. I always considered you more As like a the cyborg. Um, uh, <laughs> what was the fucked up sea creature thing that talked? Jar Jar. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, you gotta, you got to be a little bit more specific than that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Admiral Bye. Akbar. I didn't say calamari. Five dudes. <laughs>